Before we begin, please subscribe, click the bell, and stay tuned at the end for more content. Thanks. Now ring the bell! I love professional wrestling. It's my passion alongside video games. Luckily for me, video games and pro wrestling fit together like the rock and sock connection. Of course, there are the WWE games, but I'm sure you already know about those, so instead of wasting our time there, let's talk about some games from other companies. This is by no means a comprehensive list of every non-WWE wrestling game out there, nor will I be deep diving into the games we're talking about today like I do in my video essays and reviews. Instead, think of this video as a window, a look at the real games and the cartoon world of professional wrestling. Let's start off somewhere at least a little bit familiar, just to warm up. Many of you know about the WCW games on N64, but did you know there was a WCW game on NES? It's just called World Championship Wrestling, or actually, WCW World Championship Wrestling. Wouldn't that make its government name World Championship Wrestling, colon, World Championship Wrestling? All ribs aside, WCW on NES is actually pretty great. The music is good, and the title screen has really crisp sounding voice recording for the era. Also, the roster is actually thorough, chock full of classic names. Lex Luger, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, Michael P.S. Hayes, Rick Steiner, Dr. Death, Steve Williams, Road Warriors, Hawk and Animal, The Nature Boy, woo, Ric Flair. And who's that rounding out the list? It's Sting! Everyone on the roster has nice portrait art, and even their in-game graphics are great. It's cool that everyone is still so recognizable in 8-bit form. Each wrestler has a unique pool of selectable moves in conjunction with universal inputs plus their finisher. Assigned moves are designated by the player to the A button plus any direction on the D-pad, and you push A and B in tandem to use a finishing attack. It's pretty fun and strangely modern, with its control scheme reminding me a bit of the PS2 pro wrestling games. I'm actually confused by the fact that this game is so good, because usually licensed games, at least back in the day, are notoriously bad. So I looked it up, and yeah, of course, this is a reskin of another video game. But it's a reskin of another licensed wrestling game, so I guess it's just like a good video game. I don't know, it's worth checking out if you have the time. Wait a minute! What's TNA Impact on PlayStation 3 doing in the YouTube Zone? It seems fitting to talk about this one next, so in the spirit of TNA Impact, I went ahead and set some ground rules for this review. You see, it's really quite simple. First, I gotta admit, the game looks pretty good on the PlayStation 3. Compare TNA Impact to the WWE game from the same year. WWE looks weird and plasticky, while Impact has more realistic sweat and skin textures. The adaptation of Dixie Carter's investment also has a roster of heavy hitters, from Houston's own Booker T to the only Samoan that isn't The Rock's cousin, Samoa Joe, to the legendary Oxycontinental champion, Perk Angle. And what's this? It's Sting! Hey, that's AJ Styles. You're a fan of that guy. You are? You are. I am. I am. Unfortunately, this game kinda plays like ass. Square is your basic attack, triangle is grapple, X is a stronger melee attack, and circle is everything else. L1 makes your moves more powerful, R1 is a block or counter, and R2 is run. To do your finisher, fill up the impact meter, and then do a strong grapple by pressing L1 plus triangle. Then without holding any other buttons, push circle. The marquee match here is the ultimate X match, and I spent a lot of time jumping around like an idiot not knowing how to climb the rope. Eventually, I figured it out. You have to climb the corner with circle, then hold L1 and press circle to climb the ultimate X rope. Once you're up, you maneuver over to the X with the left analog stick. You can pull someone down to the mat by grabbing them with triangle, and you can attack other climbers on the rope to knock them down to the ring. Pulling the X down is just a quick time event that fills a meter, and once you fill it, you win. It's not complicated, but it's not really straightforward either. But it is not very fun. I think Impact is trying to be arcadey, and it can admittedly entertain at times, but the gameplay is too heavy. It seems like Midway was trying to split the difference between pick-up-and-play action and simulation mechanics, and Impact unfortunately achieves neither. The gameplay is too imprecise and basic to be a good simulation, and it's too slow to satisfy the cravings for arcade action. Not the worst, but I wouldn't call it good either. Kinda like TNA itself the year this game came out. You know they say all reviews are created equal, but you look at me and you look at TNA Impact and you can see that statement is not true. See, normally you go one-on-one -on -one with another reviewer, you got a 50-50 chance of winning. 
but I'm a gaming freak and I'm not normal. So you got a 25% at best at beat me. Then you add liking and subscribing to the list, your chances of winning drastic go down. You see the video on YouTube, you got a 33 and a third chance of winning. But I, I got a 66 and two thirds chance of winning because YouTube comments knows it can't beat me and it's not even going to try. So TNA Impact, you take your 33 and a third chance minus my 25% chance and you got an eight and a third chance of winning this review. But then you take my 75% chance of winning if we was to go one on one and then you add 66 and two thirds percents. I got 141 and two thirds chance of winning this video. Senior Impact, the numbers don't lie, and they spell disaster for you on YouTube. All right, the palate cleanser is over. Now it's time to jump into some Japanese pro rest. Speaking of which, I think I have a package arriving soon. Hey, babe, did you order a bunch of Japanese imports? Whoa, 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 what are you doing? You can't just walk in here without knocking. You gotta be kidding me. Everybody knocks. Let's start with some oldies. The 90s were a goldmine for professional wrestling. While North America was hitting the Attitude Era, Japan was riding high with Zenipon Prodis, known in English as All Japan Pro Wrestling. AJPW got a few adaptations, and today we're going to look at their Super Famicom titles. First up is the game simply titled Zenipon Prodis, released on the 16th of July 1993. This is actually the first game in a trilogy that I'd like to call the King's Road Trilogy, since King's Road was the prevailing in-ring All Japan style at the time. We're not going to spend too much time on the first game because the sequel is better in pretty much every way, but I really like this character portrait of Stan the Lariat Hansen. 16-bit Stan's having such a good time. There are weak and strong melee attacks, and the A button is a grapple. But not really, because collar and elbow tie-ups happen automatically, and I have no idea how the game determines which wrestler gets priority. During a lockup, you use the face buttons to perform different moves, and I think holding the button and or pressing the button plus a direction on the D-pad changes the move being done. But I can't really get a consistent response. The sequel, Zenipon Prodes, Sekai Saikyo Tagu, or World's Strongest Tag, added tag team matches and relevant tag team game modes. It also added some basic entrances, which is a nice touch over the first game. Really sells the pomp and circumstance before I get my ass kicked. Like the first game, I don't really know what I'm doing with the grapple system, but I don't think that makes the game bad. I guess I'm just a B-plus player, so the game is burying me. But these two titles could be fun with a friend, and luckily for Western audiences, the second game was localized as Natsume Championship Wrestling. It's a decent game, and it's inexpensive, an increasingly rare sight in the retro games marketplace. The third and final King's Road game is puzzlingly called Zenipon Pro Wrestling 2, Santen Yon Budokan, or All Japan Pro Wrestling 2, 3-4 Budokan. 3-4 was made as a promotional tie-in with All Japan's 4th of March show in 1995 at Nippon Budokan. Appropriately, the primary game mode has you creating a card for the Budokan and trying to put on the best matches possible. There are some small improvements over the first game. Character sprites have better shading, and there's a larger roster to accommodate the game's format. However, there are some removals that make the game worse. The health bar is gone, there's no music during matches, and the sound effects seem less pronounced, like they're being piped in somehow. But hey, there is a line of voice dialogue! When you lock in a submission hold, the referee asks, Give up? Just like in real life, which is honestly a great touch. Give up! Ask him! Ask him! Do you give up? Do you want to submit? Despite the third game's larger roster, I'd actually point you back to the first two King's Road games. The primary game mode in Budokan makes it a bit more of a niche product, and the in-match functionality changes make the game less accessible than its predecessors. Here's a strange one, Zenipon Prudis, Fight to Instead of aiming for a more traditional visual style, Fight to is more chibi or super deformed. It's cool how you can still kind of tell who each character is, but a name would have also been appreciated. And it's weird, I don't like it. Fight to Pawn's battles are card-based. Each wrestler has a unique set of cards, and you fight it out in what appears to be a Junkin format, or rock, paper, scissors style. You can activate multiple cards at once, cards have cooldown timers, and there's a health bar so you can see how terrible you're doing. I have no idea how this works. Does Airplane Spin beat Manjigatame? Ugh, I should've no-showed this one. And of course we can't talk about 90s All Japan without paying our dues to arguably THE greatest period of women's professional wrestling. 
Zenipon Joshi, All Japan Women's Pro Wrestling. Of the many All Japan Women's games, I happen to have All Star Dream, and it's one of the few Super Famicom games I have complete in box, so that's pretty cool too. This one is actually a Fire Pro game, so all the action happens in an isometric view. The roster includes the big names of the era, like Bull Nakano, Aja Kong, and Manami Toyota. Melee attacks have weak, strong, and fierce variants, and grapples happen automatically much like the men's game. From the collar and elbow, you once again press the face buttons to perform a variety of moves, and this time I know for certain that holding the D-pad in a direction while pressing a face button changes the maneuver being done. It's definitely a fun game, like most Fire Pro Wrestling games, and it's so satisfying to see Manami Toyota hit the Japanese Ocean Cyclone Suplex in 16-bit. Now how do you do that again? Where is it? Ah, here it is. Japanese Ocean Cyclone Suplex. Back kara A button plus Sayu. Classic. Let's move on to something a bit more modern. We're not leaving All Japan Pro Wrestling behind just yet, but we are moving on to something that Western audiences today will be a bit more familiar with. Shinyon Plodis. We'll start with Wrestle Kingdom on PlayStation 2, named for New Japan's annual 4th of January Super Show. There are actually two Wrestle Kingdom games. Both have New Japan as the main draw, of course, but the roster includes several wrestlers from All Japan and Pro Wrestling NOAH. Wrestle Kingdom 1's roster is like a who's who of this era in Japanese pro wrestling. Chono, Muto, Misawa, Kobashi, Takayama, Kenta, a young Nakamura, and Tanahashi, even Brock Lesnar. I gotta be honest, these PS2 graphics are awesome for the time period, and the entrances are dope. They even have the ring announcer naming off the participants. And the crowd noise during the match is so good, because it's that quiet buzz that Japanese pro wrestling fans are known for, so it makes the matches feel way more authentic. Fans of the PS2 and GameCube WWE games will feel right at home here. Square is melee, X is grapple, triangle is run, and circle does miscellaneous stuff. This game is a lot of fun, and I'm enjoying putting together interesting matches. Here's a rematch of Brock Lesnar vs Nakamura, except this time it's in the legendary Korokin Hole, and Nakamura wins. And do you remember the time New Japan's up-and-coming ace Hiroshi Tanahashi squashed the iconic Kenta Kobashi at the Tokyo Dome in a Pro Wrestling Noah ring? Oh yeah, I do think I remember reading about that one in this copy of Pai Life, Tanahashi Hiroshi Jiden. It's also good for warding off evil spirits. Back! Back, fiend! Back! Away with you! House of Torture will never be over! Wrestle Kingdom 2 nixes the Noah roster, but includes a selection of legends, including Steve Williams, Terry Funk, Vader, and Stan Hansen. The controls are slightly different, the camera is centered on the corner instead of the ropes, and the core functionalities have been tweaked to make matches more interesting. Instead of a spirit meter just for finishers, you build up spirit orbs, which can be used for finishers, instant counters, enhanced fighting spirit to buff your offense, and last minute kickouts. Also, the entrances are improved. The production values are way better, and there's crowd noise during the entrances this time, unlike the first game. Overall, two really good wrestling games, so if you have a way to play Japanese PS2 games, I highly recommend checking these out. Okay, before we return to the States, let's finish out our overseas excursion with King of Coliseum 2 by Spike Co. This series is also known as King Koro in Japanese. The first King of Coliseum was actually two games sold separately, neither of which were content complete, and that had go-away heat with a lot of people. So when it came time for the blow-off, Spike decided to make one fully priced whole game instead of two fully priced half games. Who do they think they are? Smash Ultimate? Everyone is here! Oh my god, everyone really is here. Kojima Satoshi! Nagata Yuji, Jushin Sandaraiga, Barack Obama. At 155 unique wrestlers, Kinkoro 2 has maybe the largest roster of any fighting game, let alone wrestling game. All the Japanese federations are represented New Japan, All Japan, World Japan, NOAA, Zero One, Freelancers, the MMA team, whose name is the URL ufilecamp.com, even wrestlers from around the world, Samoa Joe is in the game. Wrestlers aren't just sorted by organization, they're also divided by weight class, by stables, and by affiliation. Yeah, it's that deep. The entrances are actually kind of awesome for the same reason as the entrances in Wrestle Kingdom 2, but man, the graphics kind of look like mud. 
Nakamura has kind of a PS2 Neanderthal face that he didn't have in the Wrestle Kingdom games, and Tanahashi doesn't look anything like himself. I mean, I know he had this hairstyle at the time, but that doesn't look like him. He looks more like a young Sonata, actually. But Coliseum 2 has my guy Tomo-chan, the 141, the stone pit bull, Tomohiro Ishii, and that rules. Mechanically, Kinkoro 2 is allegedly a 3D Fire Pro game, but it's not as smooth or intuitive as the Fire Pro games I've played. I don't really have a way to describe it other than the mechanical structure feels really loose. I found myself often striking at the air next to my opponent. Each wrestler has a finite amount of these orbs up top, and you use them to do your finisher. As far as I can tell, there's no way to replenish the orbs, and not every wrestler gets the same amount of finishers to start. You're supposed to be able to recharge your stockpile of finishers by doing specific things in match, but I did those things to no avail. Also, the crowd noise is generally decent, but there are these sound bites of random fans shouting the participants' names. It's a nice touch, but it can get annoying over time. And there's commentary during the matches, which is cool, but exactly zero pro wrestling games have good voiced commentary, and that remains true here. This game is such a weird dichotomy of quality fan service and wobbly mechanics. It certainly has a lot of emphasis on the facade of professional wrestling. The roster, the venues, the announcers, the referees, the commentary, but it skimps on actual substance. If you enjoy the actual gameplay of this one, well, hey, I'm happy for you. With a roster of this size, you can't really go wrong. Let's close this video out with our last and newest game on the list, AEW Fight Forever. The roster is okay. Most of the key personnel are here. Kenny Omega, The Young Bucks, Hangman Adam Page, Chris Jericho, Brian Danielson, even Cody Rhodes is here pulling a Rick Root out of his playbook from when Rick showed up on Raw and Nitro on the same night. And oh my god, you're never gonna believe who it is, you guys! It's STING! Right off the bat, I can tell you that the WWE games look better. From a pure visual fidelity standpoint, WWE is the best show in town. The obvious comparison here is Cody, since he's featured in both games. That being said, AEW looks alright, and it has some things going for it. For instance, most of the roster is built how their real-life counterparts are built. WWE games always add six-packs to everyone to have that sorta action figure look, and I always found it to be weirdly out of touch with reality. I don't need a roster with 70 people that have the same body type. Give me a Vader, or a Dusty Rhodes, a Mick Foley, or a Bam Bam Bigelow. Those guys are awesome. While AEW does embellish some of its wrestlers' bodies, the WWE games look like all of their roster has been injected with some performance-enhancing substances. So I guess for some wrestlers, it would be accurate to real life. Isn't that right, Brock Lesnar? Size does matter. Sure, I guess that explains why you did drugs before you fought Mark Hunt. I don't know if your dad sat at the edge of your bed when you were just a little boy and filled your ear full of all kinds of garbage. Brock, Usada was pretty clear. You were on a juice, bro. You ain't gonna get under my skin, all right? No, but that estrogen blocker sure did. You can't really deny that. I wanna thank you for backing me into this corner. You're welcome. Now, can we get back to the video, please? That's why I'm here. It's actually kind of weird but cool to play Fight Forever after playing all those PS2 games, because its basic functionality is the same. Hell, this is kind of what I meant by WCW on NES having modern gameplay. Like WCW on NES and the Wrestle Kingdom PS2 games, AEW Fight Forever sees you doing lockups and then pressing face buttons with or without the D-pad to perform different moves. Doing well during the match increases your momentum meter, which eventually lets you do signature moves, and by taunting while your meter is full, you enter finisher mode, which lets you do your chosen wrestler's big finish. The core gameplay is quick, it's engaging, and I like it, but it's not without its demerits. Some animations have weird spacing issues, like the Cody Cutter, and things can get a bit touch-and-go in tight spaces, especially when plunder is involved. The marquee match, I suppose, is the exploding barbed wire deathmatch, which is... okay. Maybe it's better with a friend, but playing it alone feels like playing a normal match with inconveniences. The barbed wire ropes explode on contact, there are barbed wire tables in the corner, and there's a countdown to when a giant explosion happens, which is also funny because that's just not what happened in the real-life version of this match. All matches then receive grades and a star rating, which helps incentivize you to play the game in a more diverse and robust manner instead of just spamming one move over and over again. Aside from the wrestling, there are a few other features like creation mode, story mode, some mini-games, and some unlockables that require AEW cash, which you get by completing missions. 
There's not a lot of interesting stuff to unlock, aside from Cody and Aubrey Edwards as playable characters, not unless you want to get every single item for creating a wrestler, arena, and entrance. And entrance customization confuses me too, because the entrances in-game are really short. There, that was the whole thing. Why would they cut the entrances? Like, I get trying to jump right into the gameplay, but even the games based on Japanese pro wrestling, the most sports-based professional wrestling on Earth, still have spectacle and grandeur. Look at the entrances in those games and compare them to these. Again, the gameplay is fun and I enjoyed Fight Forever because it's very reminiscent of my favorite pro wrestling games. But I think the biggest complaint I have with Fight Forever is how it feels content deficient. Sure, there's stuff, but none of it is that deep, so it doesn't hold my attention for long. And even adding the DLC doesn't help much, at least not as of this recording. In line with many of this video's other games, I think this one is best with friends. Like the first Assassin's Creed game, AEW Fight Forever is weak on content quantity, but strong in core concept. As a game, I'd say it's fine. I'd give it something like a 6 out of 10. But as a launch pad, AEW Fight Forever is more than solid. And to continue with the naming scheme of professional wrestling chants, I do have some suggestions. <clears throat> AEW, this is awesome. AEW, you deserve it. AEW, yes. AEW, what? AEW, CM Punk. Oh no, I forgot to take this off the list in case, uh, based on everything that happened. Just strike that one. AEW, let's go Cena. Cena sucks. AEW, Suplex City. AEW, Sexual Chocolate. AEW, suck it. AEW, you suck. AEW, you still got it. AEW, you sold out. And of course, AEW, holy shit. So, with that being done, I suppose this is the curtain call. This isn't goodbye, it's just a see you later. Maybe I'll do some more pro wrestling videos if you guys are interested. But for now, I must bid you adieu. So, goodbye, mwah, and good night. Oh my god! Who led Matt with the steel chair? Somebody stop the damn match! You think it was that easy? I got a lot left in the tank! He's got the pin, but where's the referee? There he is! There he is! Come on, ref! The cover! Two! Oh, he kicked out! Two! What's he doing now? Who's uh, on? Choke slam to hell! The cover again. Will this do it? We have a new champion. Damn it!